हेलो यस सर हां जी वेलकम टू द न्यू सेशन ऑफ थ्योरी ऑफ कंप्यूटेशन टुडे वी विल लर्न द डेफिनेशन ऑफ ग्रामर देन वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट चोम्स्की क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ लैंग्वेजेस राइट सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी हैव अ डेफिनेशन ऑफ ग्रामर सो बेसिकली ग्रामर इज अ फोर टपल्स grammar it is of four tuples the tuples are v n v t capital p capital s so i'm repeating again grammar consists of four tuples the first tuple is vn which stands for variables then we have vt which stands for terminals p stands for productions and s is for start symbol s is for start symbol so variable is also called as non terminals non terminals right so basically variables are written as capital letter variables will be written as capital letter for example capital a capital b and so on up to capital z right so next symbol is vt vt is also written as this symbol which is called sigma so here sigma is terminal terminals are written with small letters small a small b small c up to small z so digits are also known as terminals your digits from 0 to 9 are also called as terminals then your special symbols plus minus star division and so on these are also called as terminals right then we have p p is a production which of which is of the form of alpha goes to beta p is of the form of alpha goes to beta these are called production or rules and it is written by alpha goes to beta where alpha comma beta are the strings in v and union sigma right so this is your p production alpha goes to beta where alpha comma beta are the strings in v and union sigma where vn is your variable and sigma is the terminal right and the last one is s s is a star symbol right so i'm repeating again grammar is grammar consists of four tuples right grammar consists of four tuples the first tuple is called a finite finite set of finite non empty set of symbols called variables or non terminals finite set of 
known empty symbols called variables then we have finite known empty set of symbols called terminals which will be written with v t or sigma then you have productions p which will be written with alpha goes to beta where alpha comma beta are the string on v and union v and union sigma right and the last one is s s is the start symbol so let me write one example for grammar so for example s goes to capital a b small a capital a goes to small a capital b goes to small b right so these are the examples of productions this is your alpha and this one is your beta alpha beta alpha beta now how you can consider uh, how you can make the grammar so here g consists of four tuples the first tuple is variables v n so all the capital letters capital s capital a capital b will consists of v n so this is your first tuple next you have terminal so here you have two terminals small a small b small a small b two terminals then you have capital p and s so here p consists of 1 2 3 productions number 1 number 2 and number 3 production right so this is your vn this one is your vt this is your p p consists of these three productions and s is the starting production right so this is the example of grammar let me write one more grammar let me write one more example for the grammar for example here you have e goes to e plus e slash e star e slash a slash b this slash means or 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 it means that we have four productions we have four different production the one the first production is e goes to e plus e the second production is e goes to e star e the third one is e goes to small a and the fourth one is e goes to small b right so if i have to write the grammar for this you can write it as the first one is v and so in v and you have only e we have only one variable that is the capital letters that is e the second one is vt so we have small a small e plus and star so this is your v and this one is your vt comma p and in place of s now we have the starting symbol that is e so this is the second example of grammar right so i'm repeating again grammar is four tuples v n v t p comma s but in this particular example we have capital e in place of s that is the reason i have written e in place of s right so this is your technical definition for grammar so next we have chomsky classification of languages next we have chomsky classification of languages 
so according to noam chomsky there are four types of grammar type zero grammar type one grammar type two grammar type three grammar right so type zero grammar is also called as unrestricted grammar type one grammar is called as context sensitive grammar type two grammar is called as context free grammar and the last but not the least type three grammar is called as regular grammar so let me start with the first type which is called type zero grammar a type zero grammar is any phrase structure grammar without any restrictions type zero grammar language are recognized by turing machine these languages are also known as recursively enumerable languages right so these languages are also called as recursively enumerable languages the syntax for type zero grammar is phi a xi goes to phi alpha xi this symbol is called phi and this symbol is called xi so where phi is left context xi is right context and a goes to alpha is the replacement string right so capital a goes to alpha is the replacement string so this is the syntax for type 0 grammar let me write some examples on the board so first of all i need to write the syntax phi capital a xi goes to phi alpha xi so this is your left context this one is your right context right left context right context and capital a goes to alpha is the replacement string so first of all the example is the first example is small a b small a b goes to cap uh, small a b capital a small b c d it goes to small a b capital a b small a b capital a b b c d right so example for this type zero grammar so here when you compare your example with the syntax so this is the syntax when you compare your syntax with the grammar you will get to know that this ab is phi is ab and xi is small bcd right so here so when you compare your syntax this complete syntax with your example you will get to know that your left context is ab on both hand side so the value of phi is ab and xi is bcd on both the sides right and capital a goes to capital ab is your replacement string capital a goes to ab is your replacement string so this is the first example of type type zero grammar which is also called unrestricted grammar 
let me know you why it is called unrestricted grammar because in this case the value of alpha can be null also that is why this is called unrestricted unrestricted grammar there is no restrictions on replacement string right so let me take the second example for this suppose we have a c goes to a capital a c goes to capital a now when you compare this example with your this syntax you will get to know that here this a and a is your phi and c on right hand side c goes to here you don't have anything so your replacement string is null that is the value of alpha is equals to null and you don't have any right context after c you don't have any symbol written over there so the value of phi is null so that is the reason we have called it as the replacement string can be null also right so here the value of alpha is null so this is your type zero grammar which is also called as unrestricted grammar unrestricted grammar so next we have type 1 type 1 grammar so a production which is of the form of phi capital a xi just wait so type 1 grammar a production which is of the form of phi capital a xi goes to phi alpha xi is called type 1 productions where phi is left context and xi is right context so it means that the syntax of type 0 and type 1 is same right but the difference is here the replacement string can't be null although phi or xi can be null but your replacement string can't be null so a grammar is called type 1 or context sensitive grammar so the second name of type 1 grammar is context sensitive grammar right if all of its productions are type 1 productions the languages generated by these grammars are recognized by a linear bounded automaton right so uh let me write the example for this so here small a capital a this first of all this index phi a xi goes to phi alpha xi small a capital a goes to b c d small a b c d small a b c d b c d so this is the first example when you compare this with your syntax so small a is your phi b c d b c d is your right context that is your psi right and 
capital A goes to B C D is your replacement string. This A goes to B C D is your replacement string, right? So next we have type two grammar. So type two grammar is also called as context free grammar (CFG) or BNF, which stands for Bacchus Nor form. Context free grammar or Bacchus Nor form. So type two grammars generate context free languages. The productions. must be in the form of a goes to alpha the productions must be in the form of a goes to alpha where a belongs to non terminals that is your variables and alpha belongs to terminals union non terminals that is your combination of variables and terminals these languages generated by these grammar are are be recognized by a push down automata pda right so first of all the example or type two grammar so a goes to alpha where capital a belongs to variables capital a belongs to variables and alpha belongs to belongs to sign b and union sigma sa so here you can write it as capital n or t t for terminal and for non terminals or your variables right so example is s goes to capital a small a and capital b goes to small a b c so you just need to remember this whenever on right hand side if variable occurs it will consists of first position it will take first position on right hand side if the variable occurs on right hand side it will take the first position and followed by any number of terminals right if it does not occur on first hand side it will not be occurred after terminal so these are these examples are correct examples right some wrong examples capital a small a capital b this one is wrong s goes to small a capital a capital b again this one is wrong right i am repeating again if variable occurs on right hand side it will consists of first position it will take the first position on right hand side right otherwise any number of terminals alone can occur only terminal no single terminal again this one is wrong under type two grammar right so next we have type Three grammar. So again, the syntax is same. Capital A goes to alpha, where capital A belongs to variables and alpha belongs to variable union sigma star. Right. So here are the examples. so in this case if 
terminal occur it will consists of first position followed by any number of variables so this is correct example capital b goes to small b capital c capital d this one is a correct example and capital a goes to small a again this one is the correct example under type 3 so type 3 grammar is also called as regular grammar so a goes to alpha is the syntax for type 3 grammar so the example is capital a goes to small a capital a if terminal occurred so it will it will be taking the first position on the right hand side right or it will come along on right hand side only terminal should be there right so this is the main difference between type 2 and type 3 because the syntax for type 2 and type 3 is same i am repeating you again so let me write type 2 over here although the syntax is same but what is the difference between type 2 and type 3 in type 2 if variable occur it will just take the first position or only multiple terminals can occur or multiple variables can also occur capital a b c d so this all are correct examples right this is your type 2 and in case of type 3 if terminal occurs it will consist so uh, it will occupy the first position right it will occupy the first position on right hand side followed by any number of variables so this is your type 3 grammar so type 3 grammar which is also called as regular grammar type 3 grammars generate regular languages type 3 grammars must have a single known terminal on left hand side so here you can see that we have written only single known terminal on all the left hand sides this is your left hand side for type 3 single known terminal single known terminal single known terminal right and a right hand side consists of a single terminal or a single terminal followed by a single known terminal right your right hand side your right hand side am i audible to all of you yes sir done so or a single terminal followed by a single known terminal right so the rule s goes to epsilon is allowed if s does not appear on the right hand side of any rule so s goes to null is allowed if your s does not appear on the right hand side of any rule so this rule will be applicable only s goes to epsilon or you can write it as s goes to null this rule is applicable only if a goes to as this thing is not there right s is not appearing on right hand side to any rule so this is your chomsky classification of languages so how languages and automata is related with each other so this diagram will show you about that so here you can see that on left hand side all the languages are written type 0 type 1 type 
and type 3 so type 0 is called unrestricted grammar which is related to tm here tm stands for turing machine here tm stands for turing machine next type 1 is associated with lba lba stands for linear bounded automata i am repeating again linear bounded automata then we have context free grammar so context free grammar which is also called as type 2 grammar which is related to pda pda stands for push down automata and the last but not the least type 3 grammar which is associated with fa which is called as finite automata right so here you can see the table so grammar type grammar accepted language accepted and automata so for type 0 so for type 0 the grammar accepted is unrestricted grammar the language accepted is recursively enumerable language and the automata is turing machine for type 1 the grammar accepted is context sensitive grammar and language accepted is context sensitive language and the automata is linear bounded automata similarly for type 2 context free grammar context free language and push down automata and for the last type type 3 regular grammar regular language and finite state automata right so this is about your chomsky classification of languages so moving towards next topic the name of the topic is derivation and languages generated by grammar the name of the topic is derivation and language generated by grammar under this topic we will be covering two more topics the name of the topic is derivation and languages generated by grammar right so we will be covering two sub topics under this the first topic in first topic the grammar is given to you grammar is given to you and you have to find out the language you need to find out the language right and in second sub topic the language is given the language is given and you need to find out the grammar corresponding the about language right so let me start with the first topic in which grammar is given right so the first example is first example is if capital g is equals to if capital g is equals to so here capital g is grammar the first tuple is capital s the second tuple is 0,1 the next tuple is s goes to s goes to 0 s1 comma s goes to null 
and the last tuple is S. So these are the four tuples which are given to you where capital S is variable. 0, 0,1 terminal and these two are the productions which belongs to P, which belongs to P, right? And capital S is the start symbol. Now the question is, find out the language generated by following grammar. The question says that we find out the language generated by the above grammar, right? So this is the question. Now, the solution. How you will be able to find the solution for this particular problem? So first of all, you have to check for the productions which are given to you, right? So we have been given with these two productions written with S goes to 0, S1, comma, S goes to null. So we have been given with two productions, right? After that, your answer should be in terminals. Your answer should be in the form of terminals. First thing, the answer should be in the form of terminals and the terminals should be the power of something. It can be N, it can be M, it can be Y, it can be Z, any power. And there will be no variable there will be no variable in your answer, right? So let me start. I'm repeating again. Your answer should only consist of terminals and terminals are of the power of something and there should be no variable present in your answer. So the first production which is given is S goes to 0, S1. This is the first production which is given to you, right? So if I repeat this production, I can write 0, 0, S1, 1 because S goes to 0, S1. Only terminals will be repeating, but variable will not be repeating, right? Only you need to repeat the terminals and you don't need to write S again, right? After that, if I put this production one more time, it will become triple zero S triple one. And you need to write the reason because of zero S one, this thing, right? If you keep on doing like this to n times, it will become zero power n, capital S, 1 power N, right? And the reason is because S goes to 0, S1 by N times. By repeating this production, S goes to 0, S1 by N times. So your half work is over, right? So your terminals, your answer should be in terminals. So 0 and 1 are two terminals, which, which are of the power of something. So n is the power. Now your main aim is to remove this s, right? Your main aim is to remove this variable. So let me find if there is any production which is given to you in the power of null. Yes, of course, it is given in the question. So here you can write it as s goes to 0 power n, 1 power n, because s goes to null, right? So this is your answer. So the language generated by this grammar is 0 power n, 1 power n. This is your answer. Uh, for the so I'm repeating this question again. The first thing is your answer should be in terminals. 
your answer should be in terminals and terminals should be in the power of something let's suppose it is m and there will be no variable in the answer right so let me start with the production here s goes to 0 s1 this is the first production when you when you put this production one more time it will become double zero s double one and here you need to find write the reason because s goes to zero s one right then when you put this production one more time again the terminals will be repeated but the variable will not be in repeated mode right so one more time 000000s11 because s goes to 0s1 if you keep on working like this up to n times it will become 0 power n capital s 1 power n and you need to write the reason because repeating S goes to zero S one to n times by repeating S goes to zero S one to n times you will find this. So you have this X S as a extra term because we don't want any variable in answer. So you need to find out whether there is any production. Which will eliminate S? Yes, it is given in the question itself. S goes to zero power n, one power n, because S goes to null. Right. So your language generated by this particular grammar is zero power one, one power n. So this is your answer. So moving towards next example. So in second example, the grammar which is given to you is question number second. G is equals to capital S comma capital C. The first couple is capital S comma capital C. The second couple is small a small b. The third couple is p, and the next couple is a c. Right? The next couple is so here c goes to A C A small A capital C small A slash B. So here you will be given with two productions. Capital C goes to small A capital C small A, and the second production is C goes to null. You can write this complete thing with the two different production. right so its meaning is same right so let me start with the solution so the question is you have to find out the language generated by this particular grammar this is your question so solution is so you need to start with this c goes to small a capital c small a this is your first production when you repeat it one more time it will become this because a c goes to a c a right if you write this thing to n number of time it will become a raised to power n capital c a raised to power n and the reason you need to write it there as repeating c goes to a c a to n times 
that is the reason you will get n power right now you have to remove this capital c how you can remove this capital c by checking whether there is any production which is given in the question which will remove capital c to terminal or it will end it right so here we have one production capital c to b so at last step a raised to power n capital c will be replaced by small b this because c goes to small b so for this question the language generated by the grammar is a raised to power n small b a raised to power n so this is your answer for this question a raised to power n small b a raised to power n so in these two examples we have seen that we have converted we have find out the language generated by the above grammar right now in next example we will be finding out the grammar language is given and you need to find out the grammar so the question is find out find a grammar generated find a grammar generating l is equals to l is equals to a raised to power n b raised to power n c raised to power i so in this question a language is given to you right all the terminals are there and those terminals are in the power of something right a raised to power n b raised to power n c raised to power i so now you have to find out the grammar it means you need to find out g you need to find out vn you need to find out vt you need to find out p and you need to find out s so here small a small b and small c is given in the question it means vt is given here one set which consists of all the terminals is given right so first of all assumptions you need to assume something so here i am assuming that capital s goes to capital s small c this is my first production which i have assumed right so starting from the last side that is c if i repeat it it will become s goes to c c because s goes to s c right if you repeat it to i times it becomes s goes to s c i here the reason is by repeating s goes to s c i times right so you can see that you will get the last c i by using this production i times right so after this now you have to produce this a raised to power n and b raised to power n now my second assumption is s goes to capital a this is my second assumption if you put s goes to a in place of this you will get s goes to capital a c i and the reason is because s goes to capital a right so next we 
have to generate the powers so my next third assumption is a goes to small a capital a small b because you have to produce small a and small b right so my third assumption is capital a goes to small a capital a small b now replace this in place of this so s goes to small a capital a small b c i and the reason is a goes to small a capital a small b right so this is my third assumption now if you repeat it let me rub this now if you repeat it to n times if you repeat this step to n times you will get a raised to power n capital a b raised to power n c raised to power i and the reason is by repeating a goes to small a capital a small b to n times you will get this right now what is extra in this production capital a now the fourth and the last assumption is capital a goes to null capital a goes to null is the last production uh, last assumption so a raised to power n b raised to power n c raised to power i so this thing which we required so we have started from sc and we have reached to our solution that is a raised to power n b raised to power n c raised to power i right so let me complete the grammar now let me complete my grammar so my grammar is g goes to v and union Uh, v n comma v t comma p comma s. So where v n is s capital A, s and capital A, v t is small a small b small c, and p p consists of one, two, three, and four productions, right? p is a productions which consists of four productions written with romans 1 2 3 and 4 and last couple is capital s so capital s will be written as as such right so this is your answer